Ego, don't let it get the best of you. All right, cheers. Yes. cheers. <laughs> All right, we are back for photography after hours. And we have, a again, a new special guest that we had on our um, other episodes here, Lisa Langell. I'm going to introduce everyone else. We have uh, Sprague, Susie, and my name is Nick. And we're glad to have you back again. Um, we're going to be talking about ego today. But before we get into that, let's say a, a little bit about our sponsor, PAC, who is the Photographer's Adventure Club. Um, they do workshops, seminars, photo walks, contests, all kinds of great stuff related to photography. Check it out on photoadvclub.com. So Ego, um, we, we've all been on a photo walk or, or met someone out in the woods shooting that has just a know-it-all. And, and just everything is about them. Everything is, you know, hey, check this out. This is my best lens, my this, my that, all this stuff. So uh, that's usually you, Sprague. So we're going to start yeah, with you. Absolutely, you know. <laughs> Well, I'm just a jerk. I don't know what to tell you. You know, that's you know, they needed one, and here I am. You know, I don't know what to tell you. But so you've met that but person. For some before. reason, they all want me. I, I don't know what. <laughs> what? So, yeah. so, you, so you've you've met that person before. We all have. So, so what's your take on it? You know, short take on it of um, you know, what you think is going on there. Well, I think a bit of uh, overcompensation, a little bit for things that you don't know. I mean, in our group, uh, everybody is um, very diversified in their talents and their knowledge. And so the great thing about a group like this is that you can pick up something from everybody when you come to a, to a meeting. But from time to time, you'll get somebody who simply comes in and they know everything about everything and they're just going to play it out for you. And yeah. so it uh, it's... Helps to be a little bit self-effacing from time to time. It's kind of, kind you, of a turnoff a little bit, well, you know. You're like everyone's like kind of veers away from that person. It seems like us. It's like me, 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 me. Look at me. Look at my. Look at my pictures. Look at my this. And you're like, ah, yeah, like, yeah. okay, I gotta go get another beer. Unsolicited, or water. yeah. And en enough about me. What do you think of me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about me a little more. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's so frustrating because it's a, a distraction. Because I find sometimes these folks just gravitate to you right like they can pick you out of a room you know kind of like a cattle jump on the lap of the one person that doesn't like cats and they just kind of corner you and just lob you with this information about how amazing they are how amazing their work is like you say and and uh, usually find some backhanded compliment in there somewhere for you um, you know it's just frustrating and I know a lot of photographers you know this group has been so awesome packed because it really nurtures uh, photographers, you know, from those who have a cell phone and that's it to those who have, you know, 10 grand in gear or more, but it nurtures people. And I find that these folks really have a way of turning off the, the newer photographers and frankly, even a lot of seasoned ones. So, um, and one of our primary objectives is for everybody's involvement in, uh, the photography club anyway, is for that experience to be reciprocal so that you have an opportunity to, uh, to learn and get get new experiences, but also to give back. Mm -hmm. And um, and it is frustrating sometimes when you have people come in and sort of participate, but they're not really looking to learn or interact. They're just looking for a podium or a platform to mm -hmm. to kind of put their two cents in, and you know that kind of stuff. Where where they're not really open mm -hmm. to growing as well. And I think. We all have room to grow. There's always something to learn, definitely. One of the points I wanted to bring up was, um, you know, I, I've shot with some pretty prominent photographers, Canon photographers like like Ken Sklude and Michelle Santano and Joel Grimes and people like that. And, and with those people, when you're shooting next to them, they don't mind if you're butted right up against their tripod, you know, mm -hmm. like you and I, we would shoot. And if that's fine, you know that your focal length and your settings and your vision of the shot are different than mm -hmm. what I'm shooting. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you start to get into some of the ego type of situations, there's secrets, secret spots, secret this, secret settings, like they were born with that camera in their hands and no one actually taught them. And, and that drives me nuts because, you know, we could all be standing there in a row. And there's only one time I can recall we talked about before on this mm -hmm. show is with that lightning that it was such mm -hmm. the lightning was so 
just in sync that we all actually got very similar shots but that rarely happens that's not something that and we were all literally even closer than we normally are because we we're trying to stay out of the rain yeah. so we we're under the uh, tailgate so we were like this far apart <laughs> like we were standing back our cameras were practically touching so you know yeah. with that if you're all facing the same way but that's so rare you know when, when i've gone out with ken when i see he posts something or joel or something like that you just look at the pictures and you're like that's not even what i envision that's cool yeah. and it's yeah. like oh it makes you think but you know you're not worried about what you think when you get to a certain level so i, I don't know I, I don't think we had brought that up but i wanted to bring that up that secrets are kind of bad there's no secrets someone taught you teach yeah, someone else, teach someone else. Well, yeah. some of the better people that i've uh, gone shooting with that were instructors i think they work hard to make sure that each individual in the group you know gets better and so it's less about them getting the shot during that shoot and helping each individual improve you know their settings their um, uh, framing of the image and you know the perspective of it and really that's what you're trying to impart and make sure that they're successful yeah. and then take a look at the shots that they're taking and you know just help them see you know yeah, better and better yeah you know? i shoot very little yeah. on like a photo walk or something because i'm yeah. too busy helping people talking to people chatting and stuff like that so it's like i leave and i'm like oh i forgot to take pictures and yet they still get the good shot, don't they? Because every once in a while you're, you're in there, you're working, and they still just come up behind you, then bam, it's like, wait a minute, how'd you get that? You know? <laughs> exactly. One of the less obvious or you know more subtle ways that I think I see ego come into play, too, is um, in that attitude of this is the only way to do it. Mm -hmm. And so they know one way that something works, and another approach is just invalid. And... Uh, in photography, there's almost always half a dozen or more different ways to do the similar thing or get the similar outcome. Um, so I think that I see that a lot. And I see in critiques when people are giving feedback on others' images, particularly in the forums where we have community uh, collaboration and someone will post a photo and it takes guts to want to post your photo it it requires a certain degree of ego or at least self-confidence to post your photo up in front of thousands of people but then those that give criticism sometimes are not doing it constructively oh we mean like oh your photo sucks don't quit your day job right <laughs> <laughs> and, like how's that helping anyone yeah, it's not constructive at all and I, it amazes me well, it how... it makes them look like an idiot, too. Like, you just, yeah. you're and, like... And you're not making this up. You've seen posts oh, yeah. like that. Daily. Worse than that. Like we that. see yeah. it daily. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. see yeah. worse than that. That's yeah. a toned-down version yeah. of stuff that people have said, you and know? It's unsolicited. It's not even right. like these people will say, please give me feedback. It's, you know, yeah. someone just decides... And so you think about, like you mentioned, what uh, what's their motivation, right, for, for being that way? Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's not productive, um... Everybody that picks up a camera does it for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there isn't anyone here that has innate understanding of all of the principles of photography. And, you know, even if, you're, if you have all the background of science and things like that under your belt, you still don't pick up a, a camera and immediately couple that with an artistic eye and all of that kind of stuff. It takes practice. It takes feedback but the feedback when it's negative like that does nothing to help a person grow and so that's that's where I most often see ego being a big problem I mean this the attitude things of the you know hey I'm great here look at my photos all the time thing isn't as annoying but to see a new person you've never been squashed. trapped by someone like that I've been yeah. trapped by someone that's handed me a stack of photos and like look at them all and I'm like yeah. There's it's other happened. people here. <laughs> okay, I saw them. Yeah. They're great. Go. Well, I think the other thing is that people tend to gravitate to a certain type of photography or a certain type of subject, mm -hmm. and then so they adopt certain rules for shooting their work mm -hmm. and for critiquing other people's work, and somebody who thinks that landscapes are the only way to go, maybe they're not the best judge of what a great portrait or a model shoot or something like that should look like. And um, and as I mentioned earlier, my, my pet peeve is everybody is always screaming about the white spot in the photo. It's just like, my goes to the white spot, the white spot's not the subject, this is a lousy picture. And that, that may not be what the subject is trying to convey. And, you know, it's always uh, an artistic interpretation that tends to be the most... Um, compelling image. If you look at Joel Grimes, I mean, his are uh, composites, and his biggest 
criticism from people was, that's not a photograph, you don't know how to take pictures, yes. your work is terrible. But his work is awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. And he's made a lot of money shooting that style. And I saw a, a guy come on our site who shot something like that. He did composites, but they were very urban street scenes, kind of, you know, a little bit blown out, very ethereal looking. Mm -hmm. And people just ate him for lunch. They just tore his work up and just told him, you know, this is lousy. I don't like the subjects. You know, they make me feel uncomfortable and all that. And I was like, this, this guy's great. I mean, he's yeah. <laughs> really great. And he left and he never came back. Sometimes the purpose of the photo or the piece of art is to make you think or maybe make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. Absolutely. And so those yeah. people that basically uh, just parrot the rules all the time, well, this person's looking out of the frame or this, you know, well, that was the point. I wanted to create tension. Or Well, on that note, you want to be able to put that, uh, if you're going online, put something in there. That's one of my pet peeves is like, if you're going to do something that's breaking the rules intentionally, Put that in there. Say, hey, I have something. I, I This is intentionally centered, you know, because then everyone's going to barrage you on the rules because that's what we're taught to do yeah. is like mm -hmm. critique on the rules. But if you let people know, hey, like Joel did the, the, the picture behind me of the Arizona highways right there. And he, you know, he told them, hey, it's black and white. I know you don't do black and white on covers and it's mm -hmm. it's centered and, it, and yeah, I put clouds in it. And he told them all the stuff and they're like, OK, they knew all that information going into that. So they're like, OK, do we want to use this photo or is this not fit the bill? So right. they knew, Arizona Highways knew up front that it wasn't a surprise. Like, so, mm -hmm. you know, disclose that stuff. Put your settings on there when you post your picture. Yeah. Put your, put what's different about it or what you did intentionally. And then right. that might not get you slammed. Someone still will do it. People are, you it know. It still doesn't, it, it still doesn't excuse no. the approach yeah. that a lot of people will take. Yeah. No. You know. Well, but I, but I tend to tell, you know, let people know about it. Yeah. Well, and I had posted an image that got a lot of attention, um, you know, and it did break a lot of the rules and I did it intentionally and it's still one of my favorite images. And I had another photographer make a comment. It was a kind comment, but make a comment, Lisa, this broke so many photography rules. You know, why does it still work? He's like, I love it. And I said, well, I just don't think we know all the rules, mm -hmm. you know? So sometimes things that break the rules are just because we only know some of the rules and for someone to come across and, and, give critique. Critique can be very helpful and I'm a big fan of it, but I think there's a nice way to do it mm -hmm. and there's a harmful way to do it. And we want to support, you know, photographers, not just tear them down to make ourselves look better. Yeah. Well, part of the rules are though, in order to break them, a lot of people are like, well, I just did it, but they don't know how to duplicate the work. So part of mm -hmm. breaking the rules is knowing them. If mm -hmm. you know you're speeding and you get pulled over, then you're in the know of yeah. like, hey, yeah, I was speeding. Right. But if you're just going driving as fast as you can, you get pulled over and like, why'd you pull me over? So you don't really know because I'm a driving enthusiast. <laughs> but you, but you, have to, you have to know them before you can break them. If, yeah. if not, then you're just lucky. Exactly. So, you know, know the rules learn the rules and then bend them and then you'll you'll have a lot more success yeah. and let people know you bent them be like hey yeah. i did this and i'm okay with it yeah you know well, like like when joel you, and me, when you have a good grasp on all of that don't be a jerk about it to everybody else right. yeah. <laughs> you know and you made such an important point with that and i think there's so many people that love to just advertise what they know just to make themselves look great you know like i i teach a lot of photography workshops and one of the things that i've had consistently said to me by attendees is you know, I've taken workshops by and they'll name some pretty prestigious providers of workshops. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, all I did was feel like the show was about them. You know, the photographer showed me 30 images, you know, in one sitting of their work. I really didn't learn anything. They talked about all this jargon. They didn't boil it down for me. And, you know, they're taking an intro class. It's not like an introductory mm -hmm. level person went in and took an advanced class. They're, they're going to get this basic information. And I often find those with a lot of ego, if you will, uh, don't care about the person that they're trying to teach. They just want to put on a show about how much they know. And that can be so intimidating. And, and it kind of goes along the same thing with, you know, the gear snobs, right? And, and I've seen that in some of the workshops that I've done or places that I go, you know, I do a lot of wildlife and it's very easy to get very competitive with how long your lens is compared to how long somebody else's is. And, uh, you know, George Carlin theory, <laughs> <laughs> bigger missiles, rather bigger <laughs> missile theory. <laughs> exactly. I mean, literally. Uh, and it's very interesting. It was me being a female photographer hauling along these big, long lenses. The 
attention that I'll get from certain people who feel... You have some kind feel, of envy? Yes, yeah, some kind it's, of envy. It's not the length, it's how you zoom it. That's right. <laughs> Unless it's a prime, and then that's a whole other story. But you Well, know, everybody has the frustration of banging something on the table. You know? <laughs> it's not the length, it's the aperture. That's yeah. right. And so, you know, I'll... I'll I'll be teaching a workshop or leading, like my Alaska workshop will go and a lot of people have a lot of really nice gear. But I'll sometimes get people that say, oh, well, you know, what do you want Canon for? Nikon's the only way to go. You know, Nikon makes better glass or, you know, the opposite. Canon's blah, blah, blah. And what are you doing with Nikon? You know, and I'm just picking two very common arguments. But whatever it is, I don't care if someone came in with a point and shoot that was $50. Whatever your conversation is, isn't going to change whatever gear everyone's brought with us to this place today. So get over that. If someone's asking you, I'd like to upgrade, what do you recommend? That's one thing. But these folks that just feel so uh, an abundance of pride in their gear and that everyone else is, is you know, for you know what. That's a nice way to say it. An abundance all, of pride. All that's the it. cameras. That's I've, it. Had, yeah, I've been tested all the cameras. None of them are that great right now. I'm not happy with any of them. So the ones are too heavy that I have. The other ones are not great. So you know what? I don't, I'm not sold on any of them. Well, and you know, when I went to a... a, a, a I won't mention the photographer's name, but I went to this wonderful presentation about fine art photography a couple years ago, and it was an internationally well-known photographer. And he had this image, and he said, there are only 10 in existence. And he said, uh, one is hanging in a major prestigious New York uh, gallery right now with a six-figure price tag. And he put three cameras on the table, and one was, you know, some super high-end, uh, you know, medium format, and another one was a high-end DSLR. And the other one was a plastic camera that looked like a box of french fries. And he said, which camera do you think I took this picture with? And, you know, everybody raised hands and voted. And as you might be able to guess, it was the, the french fry camera that he took this picture with. It's beautiful. And so it isn't the gear. It's so much about what you do with it and knowing your equipment, not just knowing you have it. Right? So, Definitely. Yeah. Cool. Well, do you have an ego? So, you know, think about some of the stuff we're talking about out there. Make sure that you kind of keep your ego in check. We all have we all have to have some kind of ego to to keep doing this job or this passion, but don't let it get out of control and don't let it control you because then you know it turns other people off. So um, you know, let's be aware of that. Yeah. So and cool. Your comments too. Yeah. Yeah. If you have an ego, you know, curse us out down below and stuff. We'll, <laughs> we'll love that. Yeah, we have no we'll ego about it, you know. <laughs> Because we're not going to read her to respond to it. <laughs> Why? Because we're jerks. 